feel if Zambia can keep it at nil-nil. The longer, in fact, it stays tense, the more that might rebound on Ivory Coast. They carry the expectation and hope of their nation. Of course, Zambia the same, but perhaps everything that happens from here forwards is a bonus. Teams out in Libreville and kickoff is coming right up. The dignitaries are out in force, as you might expect, on a warm and damp evening in Libreville. President uh, Ali Bongo and, of course, the Equatorial Guinea President Nguema. Sepp Blatter, as I mentioned, is in town. Michel Platini, Pelé. Frankly, anyone who's... almost anyone is part of the build-up to kick-off, which is fast approaching. Just time to get a quick prediction from the three of you. Quinton, what do you think? 2-0, Ivory Coast. OK, the safe bet there from Quinton. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't got to the goal yet. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. But I hope, you know, obviously. Of course. Lauren? I would, of course, want to win, but I, I hope uh, for the entertainment of everyone, a tie game. A tie game. Evan? Tie game. Yeah, I'm going for Zambia scoring first, as I did in 94, but losing 2-1. OK, Anthem is upon us. Great scenes in the Gabonese capital of Libreville in, I'm sure, equally good voice in the commentary box for us. A good evening to Jim Beglin and first, Peter Drudge. And Matt, good evening to you and thank you. What splendid ceremony, what fervent excitement we have. And now the final formalities before the final itself. The president of the African Football Federation, the president of FIFA, the president of Gabon, the president of Equatorial Guinea representatives of the two finalists take a moment there to acknowledge the contribution of not just the lead players but also the chorus on either side the subs and the staff the team news well Zambia make two unsurprising changes since the semi-final Emmanuel Mayuka who came off the bench on Wednesday brilliantly to settle that game starts in place of James Chamanga it's Lungu for Kogonga in midfield the uh, refereeing team is led by Senegal's Diata Badara with assistance from Tunisia and Cameroon and the fourth official from the Seychelles. Still handshakes go on. 20 of the Ivory Coast, 23 have played some active part in the tournament. 18 of Zambia's 23. This score advances this far if it is anything but united. And here's the uh, Ivorian team. It's an 11 precisely as you would have anticipated it. Indeed, exactly 
as it was against Mali in Wednesday's tighter than expected semi-final. As ever, it's uh, natural that your eyes are drawn to the stellar strikers, but worth reiterating that goalkeeper Boubacar Barry has yet to concede a goal in this tournament. These nations, each of them clearly bonded, have met in key games before. As the respective captains meet on both previous occasions that Zambia reached the final, they had beaten Ivory Coast in the group stage. And when the Ivory Coast won it 20 years ago, it was via a quarter-final victory over Zambia. After last night's third-place game, there are now seven players tied on three goals at the head of the tournament scoring charts. Drogba of Ivory Coast, Mayuka and Katongo. Also Zambia are in a position to move clear on their own. And before the game, a moment's silence is going to be held. In recollection of the dreadful events just recently around the football match in Egypt. For all the victims of conflicts and tragedies in Africa, and those of the tragedy that have been recently in Egypt, at the end of a match of football du the national championship, making plusieurs morts and blessed. Africa Cup of Nations. The memories too clearly of the Zambians who fell in Libreville 20 years ago. So the end of three absorbing weeks in the Stade de l'Amitié Libreville Gabon on the banks of the Como River, the 28th final of the Africa Cup of Nations. Ivory Coast, the pre-tournament favourites, the mighty elephants seeking to win it for the first time in 20 maddening years. And Zambia, some say the strongest nation never to have won it, looking to right that wrong and become the 14th different champions of Africa. Jim Beglin, how can we look beyond the Ivory Coast? Um, well, I would go along with uh, the general view that the Ivory Coast should come out uh, as winners tonight. But you never know, Peter, big games like this can always take off in a direction you don't expect. And I think certainly early on the way Ivory Coast began against Mali, I think if they begin in a similar vein, then the Zambian defence is going to have to be right at the top of their game. In their last final against uh, Nigeria 20 years ago, did score, uh, did score early. Well, Katongo doing the right thing, you know, just kind of running at people early on in a, in a game, just looking for a little opening. Um, but Bamba did well to stand up to that and concede the corner. And Kalaba, who takes all the set pieces and very well, I might add. And they're quite, they're quite clever as well. They don't necessarily always whip it into the crowd. They just look for the space around the edges of the box sometimes. It is Rainford Kalaba with the first set piece. And that is a smart one too. Beautifully worked. And Bubakar Barry required to plunge to his right and pull off the first save of the game from Nathan Sinkala, who hit that crisply. What a smart piece of work by the Zambians. The keeper has done really, really well to get down, and he needed to be sharp in getting down to his right because Sinkala, it breaks beautifully for him, and he strikes it very, very well. Um, and that's a fine stop and, and a lovely little start from, um, from the set piece. Great initiative again from Zambia in finding Katongo, and I'm surprised the Ivory Coast haven't done their homework on that. Real scare for the Ivorians right at the start of the game. Sinkala, one of seven Zambians who've started all six now of the matches in the tournament. And, uh, it was uh, such a demonstration of football intelligence and brightness from uh, a team which has threatened Francois Zahoui early here. A nerve setter. You know, you just hope that Zambia is the underdogs for this one and 
that you know tension doesn't slip into their play, but that's that's a very promising start for them. Fabinho himself uplifted by his brilliant semi-final goal. Run from the halfway line. Brought Zahui to this set piece final. Also with the throw. To Katongo, who is alongside Mayuka up top for Javi uh, Bernard tonight. Well, he was the one, wasn't he, Peter, on the set piece just now, broke away from the front post just along the, uh, the end line and and nobody picked him up whatsoever. Chance up. Forward for Kalou. Jovino's making a dash. Really well defended coming across from left back by Musonda. Back in towards Drogba. He's, uh, strong as an ox, or perhaps, I should say, elephant. Go, 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 go! Chance up, and now Kalsu. Uh, the referees had to call a halt because of uh, a problem for uh, Joseph Musonda off the back of this uh, heroic intervention. Yeah, I mean, Kalu has just tried to slip Jovino through, and I don't know whether on the follow through, whether he just caught the boot. But there's the little break from Katongo, and just slips through the legs of Sunzu, the centre back, who comes up for all the corners, finds its way to Sinkala. And he really did get. Get enough behind that and just look how thrilled they are the fact that okay it didn't find the net but they executed it almost to perfection probably that bit of powder is no longer dry yeah well if the ivorians fall for it a second time it'll be uh, very surprising But I love to see that. Yeah, I love to see that kind of play from from a side and just not doing the thing that everybody expects. You know, just to have a little trick, a little bit of magic up their sleeve. And um, it's great to see that kind of invention. Runners up in 1974 and 1994. They've reached the finals on 11 of the last 12 occasions. The last final itself in Tunisia 18 years ago. Ivory Coast in the group stage. Ivory Coast went on to finish in third place that year. It was the final 2-1 to uh, Koku's Nigeria in Tunis, despite having taken that early lead. They might very well have taken an early lead here. But it's uh, clear that their left back was Sonda, always the way his, uh, his trailing leg got caught under him. Yeah, his, his left foot just kind of gets stuck in the turf, and he seems to go over on his ankle a little bit. And, um, well, it looks painful, and he seems to be struggling. For uh, another of the uh, seven individuals who have started every game, anyone who has had the opportunity to deputise for him in this tournament, Eddie Bernard seems, as ever, pretty well unmoved. Spelt. A perfectly laundered white shirt, which is uh, his personal uniform. And the uh, Ivory Coast left back TNA and play three starts. Back actually is the position where uh, Ivory Coast have most rotated during the course of the tournament, but it's also Grosso and TNA preferred here to Lolo and Boca. Not happy the Zambian fans because after testing the football, Drogba threw it away. Now I don't know he was just trying to slow things up, but didn't go down well against the opposition support. In charge of Zambia, he has uh, got a bit worked up about that, but it's uh, and Kalsu hurling it towards the near post now. With a couple of bullets. Seems okay on halfway now. Control. 
Yeah, just a little nudge, which the referee has penalised as Gossa tried to get round, but Gossa wasn't complaining, he was getting on with it. Coming to this game as uh, officially the eighth most successful nation in African Cup of Nations history. Won it once, once runners up, twice third, twice fourth. And Zambia 14th, that's the most successful nation never to have won it. Twice runners up, twice placed third. Started reasonably confidently here, Gosso away. Forward again by Musonda. Started on the left against Grosso. And Grosso got himself out of a cul-de-sac well. Yeah, he operates best from that side, Calaba. He can cut in on his, on his favourite right foot, but Grosso was very clever then. This is a lovely piece of skill. Just watch the way he gets away from Calaba. Lovely little, little flick. Cruyff-like. On that, Taken up by Mayuka, standout star of the tournament for Zambia. His uh, delivery was met by Kolo Toure. The goal that wasn't the semi final. He took it beautifully. Sonda's throw. Mayuka. And to Tongo. Bamba. Just felt something on uh, the back of his shin there, didn't he, Bamba? Yeah, he's just cut across him a little bit to Tonga. I think Bamba made the most of it. Kausu. Manchester City, Colo Toure of Manchester City, who are in European action this coming week. They're at Porto on Thursday, and uh, word today is that the Toure brothers are expected to report for duty with uh, a view potentially to playing in that game. I'm sure if Sol Bamba will be lining up for Leicester at Vicarage Road Watford on Tuesday evening. I think that might come a little too soon for him. But uh, Leicester do have a, a big FA Cup tie at Norwich next weekend, which he might be invited back into. Just so Zakora, you know, Masonda still struggling, isn't he, with that ankle injury and that ball just bounced up and got Bamba on the arm. He's, it's, it, it's, he's distraught, isn't oh, he? Very guy. upset. Yeah, well, why wouldn't he be? I mean, this, this is such a, a moment of personal angst for a footballer who is just not going to have a greater opportunity in his life than this. And, oh, that's that really is genuinely touching. Didier Drogba amongst those coming over to attempt to console a 34-year-old Joseph Musonda, for whom this will certainly be a last major tournament for whom this was the greatest day of his uh, sporting life, and it is spoiled. Injuries happen, but this is not the night for it to, to be as such. I mean, it's, it's such a pity for him, I feel for him. And his replacement is 24-year-old Nyambe Mulenga, for whom this is a first involvement in the competition. Much sympathy, of course, for Musonda, but what an opportunity for... Uh, Mulenga. Touré. It's gone in uh, relatively steady rain, cold rain by any manner of means, 25, 26, 27 degrees. 
Uh, just look at Zakora, who's on the ball now, Peter. He often drops in between the two centre-backs, almost like a third. And that allows Tiene at left-back and Gosso at right-back. Look how far advanced Gosso is. They know they can push on, you know, because Zakora is happy to sit in and cover either side. Still, like the rain, the tears flow. The pain is unabating too. No, he's been he's been part of a very good back four. They've been very disciplined, Zambia, or most of the time anyway. Um, and you say Peter, 34, experienced character. You know, he's been there throughout and. And, you know, a bit of adventure about him as well. He provides some width getting forward. It's, it's such a shame. This is long throw. The ball has stayed alive here, and the Ivorians have uh, gone to sleep and were very nearly exposed. Mayuka with the header over eventually, but there was a supposition the ball was going behind. Lungu stayed alive, and Mayuka headed over. And the best two chances of the first ten minutes here 10 minutes plus have uh, fallen away of the underdog Zambia. Well, it broke kindly to Lungu, but he did the right thing in standing it up. And I thought it was a clever header because there's no pace on it. He's backing away from goal, Mayuka, and he just tried to place it. He just tried to loop it underneath the crossbar and pretty close. Lungu. Be mildly alarmed, Francois Zahoui, year old coach of the Ivory Coast. It's been pretty well unchecked progress for the Ivorians throughout this three week competition more so than uh, when they last won it in uh, Senegal in 1992. They were held to a goalless draw by Congo in the uh, group stage. They needed extra time to beat Zambia in the quarter-final. They needed penalties to beat Cameroon in the semi-final. And they needed an awful lot of penalties to beat Ghana in the final that year. This uh, seems to have been considerably simpler here until perhaps now, because uh, Zambia are continuing to worry Ivory Coast somewhat, though, here comes Didier Drogba. Forcefully away from a pair of them. His joint challenge was uh, sufficient to tip him over and surrender a free kick. Well, let's see where the contact comes from here. You know, maybe there is slight, but, I mean, I, I, you know, is, is he looking to go to ground really easily or does does he get a little clip? Yeah, he does. Sincala just, just catches him. Rayo Torre and... Uh, Didier Drogba discussing it, and how could this be in the quarter-final, the, uh, the free kick that Yaya Toure took, because I reckon as good a free kick as it is possible to take. And Drogba, we know, is capable of something similar. So he is not short of firepower, the coach. Drogba hit one of these against Mali, and the keeper saved it with his face. Get into the wall. Plain and disappointing that time. So he's got a race on. As Mayuka's keen to make life difficult for him. Gosso's fallen on the ball. But it's Mayuka who is uh, penalised for his push on the fullback. Something you see a lot now. Just get your body between ball and man. And if there's any contact, go to ground and you're probably going to get the decision from the referee. And I suppose there was an arm up in the end. I just thought because Zambia have continued with their 4-4-2 formation, they're actually working hard, Mayuka and Katonga. Look at the two of them, they're very narrow. They're trying to stop that ball there. They're trying to keep that ball out of Ivory Coast play. Um, and they are pressing quite well. And you would think with the numerical disadvantage across midfield that Ivory Coast would be dominating it by now, but not quite. Towards Drogba, scratched away by Himunde. Tidy from Chansa.
Toure to Yaya Toure. Here goes Grosso, couldn't get in behind the fullback. Watchfully dealt with by uh, Lungu ahead of Mulenga. Yeah, he, he, he actually tried to flick it, didn't he, Lungu, and missed it. And Grosso was fooled by that. Drogba, sent back for Torre, he's made a horribly thick contact on that. Yeah, didn't think he had the greatest of semi-finals either, Peter, against Mali, Yaya Torre. Francois Zahoui unimpressed, watching on. But certainly the front three, I thought Drogba, I thought Kalou and Jovino were, were very energetic and, and very focused, and I thought they gave Mali a, a really tough time. Every time the ball broke, Ivory Coast up front, they looked as if they were going to score in that first half. Hello. Nice tackle through the uh, back of Drogba. He's got a free kick now. A lot of physical look in the direction of the referee. To be honest, I thought Himunde played the ball. I mean, he, he took took a while to give it. I mean, he's got a foot in the ball. Maybe there's a bit of contact with Drogba just as he gets there. Well, as already mentioned, this is uh, not an area where you want to gift the Ivory Coast a free kick. Distinguished himself against the shot from 12 yards in the semi final. Now, from about double that distance, he has a different problem to solve. He set a wall of four to which Trogba adds himself. And the catch is a simple one. That was soft and gentle, wasn't it? I mean, they have the quality, the Ivorians, to make the wall look incidental, but um, that wasn't the best. Not too much power behind it either. Tiene, the left back. Tonight, Tiene his uh, 75th cap. He's only scored twice in those 75 games. The uh, Paris Saint Germain fullback. Awfully a lot of experience in the Ivory Coast team. Sorry, brothers, both well past 60 caps. Here, Trogba. Wins his 83rd tonight. Didier Zakora wins his 102nd cap for the Ivory Coast this evening. Keeper as well is the experienced side of 60. Good closing down again from Zambia. It's a feature of their play so far. They are really trying to press the Ivory Coast higher up the pitch. it seems to me from the Sahui he's not happy with the uh, first 20 minutes of this game at all I don't think they're moving the ball with the fluidity he would like you know it's, it's not flowing enough I would guess and I think that's because the Zambians have worked extremely hard to deny them that room and, and be allowed to play through midfield just, just there the coach as if to say come on guys what are we thinking here this is the final it's what we're here for It is an advantage. Ivory Coast have it that uh, they have played once here before. Wednesday's semi final was Ivory Coast's first game at this venue. Zambia haven't been here at all. They played their group games in Bata and uh, Malabo in Equatorial Guinea, and they played the Bata quarter final and semi final. This is his and their first foray out of Equatorial Guinea, which uh, the guys in the studio were saying to some extent protected them from the uh, emotional exhaustion of their connection to this part of the world but has made it the more acute now just ahead of the final yeah Mayuk in the thick of it again and, and Gosso just catches him on the right leg then just went to ground Teote had the first go and, and Gosso just clips him a second time so Barry having made the outstanding save of the game so far 
as uh, a direct free kick for which to prepare himself. that the uh, wall has properly retreated. Well, do they have another trick, Peter, or is it going to be a straight shot? You just don't know it, Zambia. Straight shot. And, uh, it's off target. Uh, did it take a nick on the way through? I fancy it might have done. Yeah, just from the end of the wall. I mean, difficult to see it there, but it must have just clipped Teote. Yeah, just caught him on the tie. Just glanced this tie as it, as it went through probably just as well as well because I think it was um, net bound midway through the first half of the final Calabas corner for uh, a vibrant Zambia to this point deep one is seen by Gosso and actually could work out here for Jovino and Ivory Coast can uh, break hurriedly now Jovino for Kalu it's a corner at the other end, and next to no time. Yeah, I think Nkosa could have avoided that. I, I don't think he needed to concede a corner. He could easily have played that out for a, for a throw, or even rolled it back to his goalkeeper. I think that's, um, that's too easily conceded, that, from the right back. Joshua <laughs> is French for play, isn't it, Peter? I think he just wants, he wants his players to just start knocking it about. Lou with the corner. So uh, drifted over the top as Trumper dashed beyond the near post. Yeah, and Wien is having a moan at the referee, and, and, and he does like a, a gripe. He claims that that was from Drogba alone, and one of his defenders didn't get anything on it. You can see it another corner. Who wants more deeper this time? Batman's header. Nicola Torre was in there. Well, Bamba's reaction, I mean, hands went straight on the head as if to say, now, is it because it just wasn't finished off, or does he feel he should have done the job himself? I mean, it's a good ball whipped in, he doesn't get great contact on it, but I think he felt somebody should have been on the follow-up, and Kosu managed to just get his head to it in the end. And he's obviously very displeased about the fact that it was a free, free header for Bamba, unchallenged. Mulenga. Take from uh, Mayuka. Face to face with Torre. Slipped in for Kotongo. Sure. Kalamba that was seen all the way by Bubakar Barry. It's too weak. It was a bit half hearted, really, in the end. Jovino, who has skipped from halfway before. He was there long ago, but uh, he was out. Yeah. I mean, that, that's his weaker side as well, Kalamba. He's better coming in from, from the left and, and hitting it with his right. But Lungu had started the game on the right side of midfield, Peter, and since they made the change at left back with Musonda, the experience from Gunoff and Malenga taking his place, they swapped Lungu as a, a bit of extra protection for him. Mayuka held it well. Side. But again, look, no nonsense. Free kicks because he's not challenging it. The skipper, Katongo, just grafting to get back into place. And I think there's been a great work rate, great work ethic. Um, yes. on. It's, it's a harsh call. Please. This is Calaba again. Didn't really get it out of his feet at all. And it's just kind of babied into the goalkeeper. Hello. Sure, eh? Wide. But Zambia, as we look at one of the stars of the Ivory Coast, are in uh, every position, in every person, proof that reputations don't win football matches. Organisation, togetherness, will to win. Belief, I guess, in a coach who has bonded them really well, have taken them this far, and uh, indeed now nearly half an hour into the final against a team Shock a block full of reputations. Katongo. Kalaba. Yeah, it's a little bit of a waste. I don't know whether it got a little bobble. Maybe I'm a bit kind to him. 
But um, that's good control from Mayuka. Just got hold of it and then looked around for the support. And Zakora was throwing himself in the way as well, which maybe just distracted chances slightly. So one of those, not quite to the extent of Didier Drogba, but one of those who has played uh, a little bit of football in Europe with Helsingborg in Sweden. Drogba. Yeah, unnecessary from Sinkala. He's just nudged him in the back. I wonder why the way that Drogba is one of three players in this game, together with uh, Kotongo and Mayuka of Zambia, who, if he were to score, would become the top scorer in the competition. Also, there are seven players, all of whom clearly aren't involved anymore, who have three goals in the African Cup of Nations this year. Here's Kalu. Protection you were talking about, Jim. Yeah, just just to kind of just to help him slot in. Lungu is, is getting back and trying to bail him out. Mayuka's won that free kick from Zakora. Understandably, I think uh, pretty much was. Javino again with good intent and a full back outside of him. Supposed to throw. Carla, Kalu. That's a really clever pass. It's Javinho, Toure, Gosso, Drogba, Toure! Oh! oh, it's lovely stuff right up until the moment of execution. Oh, it really was. I mean, just watch Yaya Toure as well. He just kind of peels back, little shout gets the back heel from Drogba, and for me, that should be 1-0. Um, and it probably would have been very hard on Zambia, who I feel have been the better side so far. They've been much more at it, but that was a wonderful opportunity, and I can't believe he hasn't placed that inside the post. Sakura's header. Toure will have to leave that moment behind him. in terms of half-time now, and uh, words he might have to say it's uh, Ivory Coast, who were the pre-tournament favourites and were certainly strong favourites on the morning of the final. Just start living up to that expectation. There have been minor moans and groans about the ordinary way they've reached this point anyway. But, uh, it seems still to be slightly stifled by the weight of expectation. Well, listen, we've just seen it with the chance Yaya Toure has just missed, that they're in ever-present danger with the quality, the calibre of player they've got on their side. They're always a threat. You can't switch off for a second. But I think Zambia have gone out their business better than the Ivory Coast wanted to go about theirs. I think they've worked really hard. The only downside to that for Zambia is how long can they keep working this hard, you know, with a four-man midfield against that kind of 2-3 that Ivory Coast operate with. Of which is Sakura, his clearance found touch. Uh, throw, I think. Yeah. So just hit, here's the build up to that again. You know, I think he wanted to hit it first time, Yaya Toure. When it comes back in from Koso, this is lovely from Drog, but really is. Must have been a little shout from Yaya Toure. And he plays him in beautifully, and I honestly thought he was just going to place that right into the corner. Toure. Gosso. He 
can hear Hervé Reynard, can you? It's my uke is getting it all the while, you know. And um, he did leave him out, was it after the quarter final? He left him out in the semi final because uh, he didn't have the greatest game. And of course, he's back in now for the final, and uh, he's on the receiver then big time so far. He seems to be doing okay for me, but. Well, what, do you think he is on the receiving end, or are the shouts saying that the other players give it to Mayuka? Well, I mean, it, a bit it, of both. it's hard to be absolutely sure, but it sounds like he wants him to work his way into a certain position. You know, I mean, you often get coaches, um, they're control freaks, you know, they want to be out there themselves, and um, yeah, difficult to say, but. Very cool to leave him out of the semi final, came into the semi final and then won it. is waiting for this free kick. Barry still unbeaten, nearly five and a half matches of the competition. Thought about coming, then stayed. Okay. So back. This is um, quite well defended, really, in the end. I mean, it was, he was sandwiched between, wasn't he? Gosso and, and Sakura couldn't really get anything clean on it. The Champions League is back this week, and that means ITV1 Wednesday evening. The San Siro, AC Milan against Arsenal from half past seven. This one, not to be missed. So Chelsea aren't involved this week. They've got Napoli to come the week after. Imagine San Siro would come a bit early for Jovino. Expect to be involved, but uh, you never know. There's Kalu. Go out by uh, Yamunde. That was Mayuka just picking it up there, Peter, and I think that's probably what Hervé Reynard is on about. He wants him to just fill in a little bit and supplement things in midfield, just to kind of reinforce it a bit. And I think he wants him to work back. He's 21, he's young, he needs guiding. squeezed off and here comes Calaba. Forward again by Bamba. Mundi's under it. Also there to help him out. Chansa. It's Mayuka coming to get it again. I must admit by now I was thinking the Ivorians would have a control on the game. And although I think they've improved from the start, I thought Zambi were the better side from the start. I think Ivory Coast have come into it more, but they certainly haven't got a control on it. He's getting it again, isn't he? We can all hear the coach. Mayuka. He's got it again. And he's face to face with Zakora. He's teasing it. That's a good ball into the near post, well defended by Toure. Oh, Toure, what a thrilling long-legged run. So the pass into the instep of Himunde. A chance for Zambia to come again. It's the last ten minutes of a first half in which uh, they've competed really well. Tiote. Drogba. Stopped by Mulenga. Dabbed in here towards Chavinho. He couldn't get clean contact on his shot. Oh, it was really well defended, it was a lovely touch on it just to take the sting out of it. Great movement as well by Chavinho to find the space. Behind the penalty spot. 
Settled for a corner. Yeah, I think he just wanted a little bit of a run. Tongo, and it was just a bit of frustration that Mayuka didn't show. And there's just a little block. So Sunzi had gotten across. Yeah, the big centre back. Yeah, that was that was important. Good covering. Another out swinger. Oh, oh inexplicable fall. At what should have been the moment of telling impact. There's a chance. Here is Chansa. Goes to get bodies around it. Get it clear. Who we went crashing down? It might have been the centre half in Monday. Here's Tiene. He's gone a long way and uh, perilously close to carrying that out of bounds. But he did well to put the brakes on. You know, it's been raining and <laughs> pitch is greasy. Not easy to um, stop your momentum. It was a real chance, wasn't it, from the corner earlier? And did he? It's, it's difficult to be absolutely sure, but probably didn't complain too much, Peter, did he? Also, Drogba. Again, nice skill from Todd, but this time the, the end product not quite as good. And, you know, the game's a bit stretched, isn't it? It's a bit kind of basketball-like at the moment. Well, you have a go and then we will. Tongo having a go. And having a go. Expected a bit. Well, you know when he's, he's looking to work it on a stronger left side, the captain, then he's going to probably have a blast at goal, and uh, he just didn't make the, the contact. Complexed. Straight ball, which uh, might have worked for Drogba. Well, Hamunde really got caught underneath that, and if, if Didier Drogba knows, you can see from his reaction, if he gets that under control with a good first touch, then Zambia were in real trouble then. And that was just a long ball downfield that caught them. Touré. Seen by the uh, standing fullback Molenga. Clearance as far as Gosso. Keeper. He might have had more touches than his opposite number, Barry, but who certainly hasn't had to make the saves that Barry has made. Well, just look, I, I think he wants more urgency. I mean, he's been the more concerned manager, hasn't he, throughout the first half, more concerned coach. And um, I just think he'd like to see a bit more conviction about, about the Ivory Coast passing. It's just not nearly been enough and you know if it stays like this at the break Peter I reckon they'll come out with um, with a spring in their step I think he's going to get into them a bit at half time because they are capable of much more and we certainly saw that in the first half of the semi-final against Mali Imagine the uh, reaction in the Ivory Coast if they would have let this slip away I mean what an opportunity for them after all of these frustrating years and near misses and national pressure if this game were to go against them and it only takes a moment if this game were to go against them they'd have uh, trouble going home yeah it was measured through the group stage from the Ivory Coast and then they upped their game in the quarters and the semis and there was a bit more fluidity there was a bit more flow to their play um, but it seems to be back to measured in the first half of the final the uh, champion on the face of it would seem to have less to lose Rosso's down injured, but uh, Ivory Coast have the ball, so they'll carry on. But 
So don't underestimate the uh, emotional impact of this occasion on Zambia, just because they themselves have acquitted themselves so well in this competition. Here is uh, the moment he slithered when Sinkala. He's just, he's, he's, just as he's gone to, to think about volleying him with the right foot, his left foot gave from under him and he slipped over. And again, it was, um, it was Zambia finding somebody in space, you know, outside the crowd on a set piece. And this is the, I, I don't think chances, like he's, he's planted his foot into the ground. I think it's a kind of coming together of knees more than anything. Yeah. Also has uh, come off worse. No real malice in that for me. It still hurts. Of course. When it's left until half time, so it may be that uh, even without the Ivory Coast look to uh, see it through to that point and then assess his readiness to carry on. Here. Two nations dealing in their own ways with the weight of history. Ivory Coast have found that it weighs very heavily. He weight of history and expectation in their case, weight of history and sentiment in the case of uh, Zambia here in uh, Libreville, where 19 years ago 30 Zambians lost their lives in a dreadful air crash. I think Drogba's a little unhappy there because he felt that there was contact made just as he went to play the ball back. Um, and he, he was just caught and he's had a little bit more. And I'm not sure exactly which Zambian player it is, but oh, just too much in it again. Here it is now. It's there you go. It's uh, Katongo. <laughs> it's a complete complete accident he's, he's not two skippers <laughs> I think he's uh, he's making a drama out of that one did he like him cross his throw it's two minutes of stoppage time <laughs> Turn from Yaya Toure. So it's uh, sprightly again, but he's touching all wrong. He's taking his eye off it. But it's intriguing to see which way this is going to turn, isn't it? You see Gosso played in again. You know, he should be getting it out of his feet and whipping it. He just got a, a touch he didn't want. Just watch this one coming up. There you go. Not expecting that, and Lundu can get back and, and clear. I think he's got to be proud of his side, Peter. I think they've shown a good maturity and a good patience again tonight, Zambia, and there's still that element of threat from them. The Ivory Coast, we need to see much more from them. They're capable of much more, too. Drogba, who's capable of plenty, and who uh, strikes a shot, which is deflected behind for a corner into the last additional minute of the first half. Big Sun Tzu getting in the way again. Of course, the great regret Zambian ranks of having done so well through the first half, they would have conceded here now. Last raid before the interval. Kalu with a high hanging corner. Samba climbing for it, climbing on the back of his opposite number. Yeah, it's frustrating. He's just using the arms to. Um, to elevate himself in Sinkala. He felt his shirt was being pulled, little matter, the half-time whistle has gone. And uh, it remains, and anything could still happen. Africa Cup of Nations final. The VIPs, the punters, the world waits to see whether the Ivory Coast are really as vulnerable as at times they have sometimes looked in the game so far. The best moments have been Zambian moments. Ivory Coast have grown into it a little. Off as we rejoin Jim and Peter. Thanks, Max. It's just because he cares.
Well, here we go. 45 minutes into the final, still no outcome. As you say, extra time and penalties have been uh, fairly frequent friends to the final of the African Cup of Nations in recent years. Worth reiterating, though, that Ivory Coast have won their last 12 consecutive competitive matches. Six in qualifying, five here, and uh, a dead rubber at the end of the World Cup in South Africa against North Korea. 12 wins in a row in competitive football. They've won every match they've played here. But uh, on the subject of extra time and penalties, their first final, Zambia, was in uh, Egypt in 1974. They played Zaire in Cairo, and that game was drawn 2 all after extra time. And in Zambia equalised in the 120th minute, and it went to a replay. No such provision for replays these days. Second half has started with Didier Drogba in the thick of the action. Yeah, it's a little um, coming together of heads. Uh, Malenga, the left back, the substitute, and he, I mean, it was just a touching of heads, and more than a clash of heads, but he's obviously feeling the effects. I just think, Peter, that if Zahui, um, I think he's given him the benefit of the doubt, no changes. Um, and I think he'll say to him, look, if you don't pick it up in the next 15 minutes or so, then, you know, you could be coming off. I'm going to make changes because, you know, Zambia have carried the threat. They, their work rate's been very good. Their discipline's been, been excellent. And um, they've, they've kept a, a really solid shape. So Ivory Coast, the, the ball's really in their court. Now. What have you got? In terms of uh, attacking options, obviously Drogba is the spearhead, and uh, one hopes from his and their point of view that he'll be OK. Looks a bit dazed at the moment, a little bit under the weather. The only real bit of rotation they've made in the front part of the pitch over the course of the tournament has been Gradle for Kalu. And, uh, he's a bit of a twinkle toes who makes things happen. Max Gradle might get his turn. Booney up front, could get a whirl. They need some guile, they need some um, some craft in their side and, and, and they need that, that edge up front which Yaya Tiri probably should have provided with that real chance, probably the best chance of the game in the, in the first half. Here he is, Yaya Tiri. Also from right back. Tiri. Good ball, Trevino. Teasing Molenga. And then uh, dropping one into the near post. And the reach of Didier Drogba. Yeah, a little bit of a waste because, you know, he was in quite a decent position then, Trevino. Tried to slip Drogba. No, it wasn't an attempt at goal. There you go. It's a hooey. I was saying, you know, get stuck in, come on. Where's your, where's your bottle? They've had some great chances in the last two decades of uh, Ivory Coast, but surely they've never had a chance like this. Yeah, pretty well unfancied at the start of the uh, competition. Pretty well unfancied at the start of the day. But uh, what they'll have. never have a better chance either. Albeit against this uh, top-level Ivorian team. Takes a second. Ivory Coast themselves a settling goal here. Jovino, he's got round the back, he's played it in towards Drogba. And has he got himself a corner? Drogba thinks he should have. Yeah, I think Malenga might need some assistance here because Jovino, you know, almost did it earlier on and certainly went past him with ease then. Um, he's exposed, he's on his own, he's got no help, and again he's looking for drug on that near post. That's well defended by Sunzu. Came across behind Humunde. And I think that's what Mwini's saying, you've got to get two there. So, you know, Lungu's got to do his job now and try and get back and, and double up and help Malenga out. Personal opponents.
right, Peter. They do look good, but they, they play for the same club, don't they? They play together for Masembe and Democratic Republic of Congo, which helps understanding the partnership. So towards my U Cup. My Colo Touré. It's away by Tierney. By Javinho. Not tied by uh, Sunzu. For an Ivory Coast throw. Do you hear Hervé Renard again saying, you know, on the floor, not happy with the fact that Sun Tzu has just found touch with that and booted it away. He wants him to show more composure. And I think you're right as well in the first half from Mayuka. I think Mayuka was the shout for the release ball, the outlet. He's just telling people, just play into Mayuka and use his pace. Well, will it, will it not be tempting, Jim, as the game goes on? Laudable though it is for the coach to want composure and passing and keeping the ball on the floor. Zambia will become increasingly aware that they just need one break and the, and the temptation will surely exist to hit it long and hope for that break, won't it? Yeah, I'm sure Hervé Renard wasn't allowed anybody to get carried away, but I, I think it would have been quite a buoyant dressing room at half-time. I think Zambia know that they're not far away from it, and provided they keep the concentration and the discipline at the back, they can sneak this. This, this, this is on. I mean, it has without wanting to be parochial about it, has the feel, in a sense, of an old-fashioned English Cup tie. We've got an out-and-out -out favourite, we've got an underdog, we've got to half-time, the underdogs are still in it, and there is that sense now that anything can happen. And uh, it would be a huge upset if Zambia were to pull this off. And uh, as mentioned in the first half, from an Ivorian point of view, it would be close to intolerable. And perhaps... The knowledge of that is the pressure that weighs so heavily on their performance to this point tonight. But they still have in their arsenal all the right bullets. Both fullbacks pushed right on. Um, Tiene and Gosso. Um, consequently, you've got Kalu who's drifted inside. Javinho has gone inside. So their attack is now very, very narrow. Ivorians. Bamba. Down. We look to make tracks. Okay. He's just been kicked on the shin by Sincala. Mistimed again, there was, there was no real force behind it. The free kick to uh, the Ivory Coast. She won the apparently disenchanted coach for us, was Ahui. Sven Joran Eriksson after the last World Cup. long way out it's unlikely to do too much damage no that's all he was trying to do peter he knew he was just trying to help it on and obviously bamba's made the run around the back and it's just a little out of his reach as well a decent ball from Fiote, but got a little bit too much on it drogba needed a more delicate flick I said all this about zambia being rank outsiders and they are got enough very recent evidence to have known that they were likely to give Ivory Coast a decent challenge. They did, of course, beat Senegal right at the start of it all. And uh, Senegal were a few people's outside fancy, certainly to uh, make better progress than they actually did. And uh, only four days ago, they beat Ghana in that uh, semi-final with a goal 
Pretty late in the day, 78 minutes when Mayuka broke through. A penalty save that went their way. Plenty went their way that day. But maybe Destiny says that a little bit more can still go their way. Here's Jovino. Does Lusaka will certainly be the world's party city tonight. You can hear the coach again on the floor. On the floor. Keep it on the floor. They've resorted to knocking a couple long and all that's happening is basically Ivory Coast are just heading them away from defence and um, and it's coming back at him. So he wants something um, a little sharper on the deck. Manager of Cambridge United. There in the December of 2004. Chairman of Cambridge then saying we've not got time for his philosophy to flow through to our team. Given where we are in the league, he was one of the best people I've ever worked with in football. That's the chairman of Cambridge. Who we were, having got rid of him, relegated that season out of the Football League. Club football in China as well as England and France with Cherbourg and Algeria. Briefly the coach of uh, Angola, but now the second spell in charge of Zambia. He's in the final and his team have a free kick. He's uh, coached much too close to the goalkeeper Bubakar Barry. That's a waste when you've got the big men up there as well. You've got to give them something to uh, to be able to challenge for. And it's just ridiculously overhit. Also, shouted away by Lungu. And now Zambia could potentially break here. Every coast had plenty left at the back, but uh, Ayuka was prepared to run at them. Tongo up in support too. And here they still come. Chansa. Tries that that hit a hand. He might have done. Been uh, harsh to penalise against it. Yeah, the man who was closest to it, Chancer, who played the ball, didn't even appeal. Ivory Coast on the counter counter. By Mulenga. Clear from Mukausu. Sinkala. Chansa. It's deflected and squirms behind. Zambian corner. That's a bonus because I don't think it would have caused Barry too many problems. And this is the uh, penalty appeal on Golo Ture. Absolutely not. Right into his midriff. And that was the. Uh, well, it was Katonga looking for a foul. Zakora stuck his leg out and Zambia were on the break, but the referee was having none of it. Clark Katonga went down too easily. Tried the short one again, Kalaba. Shaped in deflection has carried it driftily over the crossbar. For a moment, I just wondered whether that was going to dip below it. Just just gets the head of Tiene. Drogba had gotten back on the line, but didn't really have to uh, to work, so it just drifted past the post in the end. Tried the short one again, and not tiring of it, was, uh, it was a showy re-delivery with the outside of his boot by Calabo, wasn't it? And uh, now, they continue to uh, persist 
with their short variations from the corner quadrant. It just can't be allowed to happen again. I mean, the Ivorians have got to get a body in the way. They've got to get somebody out there. Chiote got the touch, and then there was some climbing at the back post. Touch from Chiote. Yeah, it wasn't a good defensive header, that was it. And there's just a little use of the arm from Sincala, and that was penalised. There he is, climbing on Gosha. Tiene on the follow up, he got he got one um, in a place you wouldn't want from Sunzu. in the first half, the best early second half opportunities if on Zambia's way. Yeah, and as I say, Peter, I think there's a patience there knowing that, you know, they're they're good at what they're doing on, on the old set pieces. They're clever, and they know that they can always carve open an opportunity. Mayuka, away from Bamba, and uh, shot it behind a full stretch by Gosso. Great early ball in, and it's a beautiful take as well on the turn from Mayuka. I mean, that's, you can't deliver much better than that, it just needs to be attacked. In by Kalaba. Another takes the throw in quickly. Here's Chansa. Tried against Sakura. Taken out by Tiote. Ricos could do some breathing space. I think they're preparing a change there. Trevino ran into a bollard. Lender wants to get on with it. The referee's got to his pocket. Card of the final. I'll say who has shown it. And there it was. Yeah, it was good defender, wasn't by Malenga, and then Tiote has just stepped into, just kind of used the arm and again. I think Malenga could have stayed on his feet, but chose to go to the ground. And Kalu is the one to make way, as suggested by you, Mr. Drury, not so long ago. Uh, Max Bradle is uh, his replacement. So Bournemouth, Leicester and Leeds now of Saint-Etienne. Solomon Kalou's next competitive game might well be against Birmingham City in the fifth round of the FA Cup next weekend. It's amazing, really, considering how effective they were in the semi-final against Mali. Trevino, Pogba, Kalu. Nothing near that. Nowhere near that tonight. Gosso. Zambia's way. Ayuka snuffed out by Bamba. Three kicks gone against him. 
I, well, he looked to me as if he played the ball. Certainly, he got his foot round Mayuka here. But is it use of the arm? Is that what it is? I, I think it's soft again. But that, that's what's done it. He, there is, I suppose, a slight tug. Um, I'm not sure the referee saw it. I think it might have been the assistant. And I think for the protest, Peter, the scent, he's, uh, he's received yellow. I'm not sure it was for the foul. It didn't look like it. This face tells the Ivory Coast story. It's a face of frustration, confusion, self-questioning. He uh, is, yes, irritated that he's been penalised and booked for what looks something soft. But the evening is not panning out as they planned it out. Well, that's a descent he's been booked for. Four minutes to play in Libreville. Still nothing between them. That's a long way over. And still, nobody has beaten Bubakar Barry. Eight and a half hours of the tournament. Yeah, and he swapped now with. With Lungu, Lungu has gone across to the right side. Kalaba is operating from the left, and I, I feel he does his best work on that side because he can cut in and hit it with his right. A lovely exchange and uh, a really important tackle from Colo Toure. Flying in now, as the finishing line draws close. Increasing likelihood that one goal can decide this final. Grosso, greater adventure from him, real thrust from the fullback. Gradle for the first time. Fresh legs, he's got round the back here, Max Gradle. But he couldn't execute the pullback for uh, Didier Drogba. Brilliant from Sunzu, brilliantly red. I mean, as the winger kind of cut inside and and found his way to the byline, I mean, he read it beautifully. Mayuka, Lungu up alongside, Shakura back pedalling. Out came Bamba, came to Katongo, and the referee's whistle went. Well, he'd find a way to go, wouldn't he? Yeah, well, you would have thought so. I mean, he doesn't look too excited sitting there watching it at the moment, but just watch the gradle run. I mean, takes on Nkosa, gets past, and look at Sunzu doing his job really, really well to read it and, and block the attempted little ball across the six-yard box. But that's something we didn't see from Kalu, so he's got to be a little happier with that, Zahui. Quarter of the match left. Jovino for the Ivory Coast. Penetrating the penalty area, going over, penalty! To the dismay of the Zambians! And the thrill of Ivorians, VIP and otherwise. Now, Umwini saved one in the semi-final. Can the goalkeeper become the hero again? Mulega is distraught. Zahui sees opportunity knock. I always say, Peter, in this day and age, you know, if, if an attacker gets inside the box, you cannot push him. I mean, the push might have begun just on the outside of the There's box. Chances chance push, yeah. on Jovino, but... I thought there was enough in it when I first watched it to be a penalty, and you know, anything like this nowadays, player's going to go to ground. I must admit, I thought penalty. Trevino grounded, and poor old Zambia floored, because they do not deserve to go behind here. Remember, by the way, I know he saved one from Jean, as you mentioned before. Drogba has missed a penalty in this competition too. He has. There's nothing certain about this. But talk about the weight of a nation's expectations on one man's shoulders. Didier Drogba with potentially the defining moment. It's a dreadful penalty! 
perhaps the most important he's ever taken. He looks accusingly at the spot. He winces in dismay. He won't get another go. It's a long way over. Well, I was just looking to see if there was a slip or if the ground gave way or anything like that, but it doesn't seem so. He was looking at the spot. I mean, he's just leant back, got ridiculously underneath it, and that's a shocker. Yeah, he's blaming the spot, but that was very, very poor technique. Well, I mentioned that Zambia didn't deserve to go behind, and they didn't go behind. How do you think they're feeling now, by the way? <laughs> They'll be thinking this is our night. And they've obviously got to follow it through now, but you know, what a let-off. Again, once in the semi-final. And now in the final. Information of Malenga's booking and uh, words of advice from uh, the goalkeeper, I think, towards his captain, and perhaps those around him, just to keep their heads. This is no time to get hot headed. Jovino. Oh, Barry there rather reminds me of those famous pictures of Lineker around Gascoigne all those years ago. Here goes Jovino again, wriggling into the penalty area, and Drogba looking to turn. And Drogba again. But when he missed his previous penalty in the tournament, he went on to score the winning goal. Well, that time I think they were scared to go near Jovino, and in the end it was a very good tackle to stop him. But just remember the last time Didier Drogba did miss a penalty, by the way. And that one, that one is, is much worse. He's nowhere near the target. And Weenies just kind of can't contain his joy at that. But Drogba went on to score two more, you know. And... For a penny quarter final. Now here could be Zambia's chance. Budokar Barry has uh, got around to uh, others. Cross. You wonder. You only wonder. There's nothing certain about this game. You wonder whether it's meant to be for Zambia. Here's Gradle for the Ivory Coast. From Sinkala. Also. Ended up at Mayuka, beautifully held up, but uh, lashed out by Kolo Toure. Katongo, you, you knew his hands went on his face there. I mean, a better touch from him, and he takes it round his man, and he's in on his left foot as well. That's all it takes as well, Peter. I mean, Zambia know that. One really good through ball can get out of Katongo or Mayuka away. Bulk by uh, TNA. More than a quarter of an hour to play. If no further goal, if no goal, half an hour beyond that. It's uh, a change for Zambia. Substitute is substituted. With the left back replaced by the other, Katongo. Felix Katongo. Zambie. Sorti du numéro 23, Molenga Nyambe Henri. Uh, he is straight into the thick of it. The Zambian free kick. Katongo Felix. It came out to chance that they could still drop here, but the uh, flag is upraised. Yeah, there were two. That was an easy call for the assistant. Probably an ambitious shot as well from that distance. That's a long way to try and go for it. And Two of them are, are off, one just, one a um, couple of yards. No, 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 it's offside. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> it's how everyone's feeling now. Zakora has gone off for the uh, Ivory Coast. And it's replaced by Didier Conan-Yar. 
Yakuno DJ. Champions League is back with us this uh, midweek and on Wednesday evening live on ITV1 we will be glad to bring you from the San Siro AC Milan against Arsenal. The programme starts from pitch side at half past seven. Time we've got a final to decide here. The quarter of an hour of which remains. By Gradle. coverage this evening and has just tweeted about the Drogba penalty miss. Bain believes that uh, Drogba will go on to score the winner. Great player that he is. Well, let's see just how prophetic Manchester United's two-goal scorer of the weekend is. Drogba has been uh, fouled by Lungu. Yeah, he's rather high then, isn't he, Lungu? Well, if his response is anything like it was against Equatorial Guinea, then there's every chance. Arturo's ball in. Just taken off the head of Didier Drogba. I don't know whether he shouted for it, but it was Conan Yao who just got there ahead of him and just, uh, I think there was just too much pace on it, wasn't from to get a, a shout in quickly enough. And he's already gone through the motion, hasn't he, Drogba? I've thrown his head at it. Look at him behind. Zamians again. Tango with no way past Colo Toure. Oh, Gosso's clearance. Pretty one. He really sitting comfortably. Cradle. He's got a long way forward from fullback here, and he's won a corner. Yeah, and Kosu's done okay, but I, I think he had a bit more space to use then. And, um, and he managed just now. Good clean tackle as well. Okay. Well, just does it, chance it does his job well, and he's that kind of gritty character. Obviously felt that it just as he swung the right foot at it, it just came back off Gradle's heel. Thirteen different winners of the Africa Cup of Nations. They're looking to become the fourteenth. Happens here tonight. The North African stranglehold has been broken. And Mayuka has broken a tackle here, and Mayuka's played it in. But, uh, in such a way that uh, Bamba was able to clear. Fantastic battling from Lungu. So sorted it out with Tiote. 
won the last three. Tunisia, the one before that. It's been all North African in recent years. Long time since a winner from Southern Africa. Which uh, Zambia seek to be. They have been the bane of the West Africans. Seeing off Senegal and Ghana. from Sinkala. I just bobbled as he tried to to play it uh, to Mayuka. It was a great run from him as well, Peter, cutting in from the left-hand side before, but, you know, he was having a moan at Katongo in the end, Chris Katongo, but he, he couldn't do anything. He tried to play it through the Ivory Coast defence, really, and there were just too many in the way. Some protection from the midfield player. And they can attempt to break off the back of it. Toure is sort of a danger developing. Mayuka. Felix Katongo. Well. Trevino. Lucas Lungu. That's happened too much tonight, hasn't it, for the Ivorians, you know, just kind of trying to take that extra touch, just move the ball on quicker. I think the Zambians are still the ones playing the football. Shusamba Lungu. He's fading away. Yeah, very speculative, you know, but maybe worth a try because nobody really came to close him down. The goalkeeper was making absolutely sure, wasn't he? Bubikar Barry flung himself when it was always going wide. He pulls the arms away, but by then, Mikoso had committed the foul, just a little tug again on, on Drogba. I thought he kept that in play. I thought he had to. Could be into the last six and a half minutes, perhaps the last 36 and a half minutes. And he did keep it in play, by the way. If, uh, this is. Africa Cup of Nations final. There'll be another one along pretty quickly, though. There, another tournament next year as it switches to odd number years to avoid clashing with the World Cup. Fight's already begun for next year's competition before this one's over. Soto and Swaziland are already out. The uh, preliminary round. This competition is in South Africa. Torre by Himunde. Felix Katongo. Tiene, who's quite an athlete, and he gets on a gallop. And he's done just that, and he's earned them a corner. Yeah, and it's needed. I mean, they've, they've got to throw as much as they can at it now, but it was well matched by Zambian right back, Nikosu. Oh, it's the 
Elephantine hero. With five minutes to play. Penalty having disappeared over the crossbar. Corner now available to them. In by Gradle. They've got good distance on his punch. Come back from Tiote. Well, that was good goalkeeping because, you know, in the semi-final against Ghana, he looked shaky under the high ball a couple of times. Chancer. He is one committed character, isn't he, in midfield for Zambia? Chancer. Time again, just a little nudge on, on Gradle. Torre on his way off. So that causes a little free sort in the crowd. Oh, oh, Memorable moments in this competition. So Not least an extraordinary free know. kick in the quarter final. But he won't finish this competition. So Wilfred Bony of Vitas Arnhem has taken his place. Target. Yeah, Conan. Uh, again, it's, it's ambitious, you know, he's a long way from the target and just dragged it. And Didier Dunning is uh, too impressed. I think it kind of sums an awful lot up about the Ivory Coast attack tonight, Peter, is that Yang Yaturi was withdrawn, as in the, the semi-final. Not a great end to the tournament for him. Let's see whether he does uh, appear at all for Manchester City in Porto on Thursday. You can see live on ITV1 in the Europa League. Well, there might be involved as well, then again, he might not. To decide. It depends on how much partying they have to do tonight. That depends on the next three or 33 minutes. And this could be the moment. It's wide. Well, Max Gradle is so, so unlucky because, you know, if this is meant and he leaves the first one come across his body, just when it gets flicked on from Wilfred Bowling here. Just watch this. I think he does, you know. I think he feigns to play it. I think it's very clever. And then decides to hit it with the uh, the left foot instead. Does it get a little nick on the way? No, not at all. Very, very unlucky. I thought that was the moment. And you still feel, as well as Zambia have played, that the Ivory Coast have it in him just to sneak one. I just feel it's likelier now. Greatest likelihood we have to face up to now is that of extra time. Are you there? Making plans for an extension to the evening. Tongo. Yeah, and when he did come on, Peter, you just see it there, you know, Lungu immediately um, sacrificed his midfield berth and just slipped in at left back. Mayuka. Alaba. Okay, sticking close to him. And Blatter engaged in it. He's made a difference and may still make a big one. Gradle, last 30 seconds of the 90 minutes. Out by Lungu. might have decided it if you are the big man you are the central figure you know that you've got to carry yourself either way for better or worse
four additional minutes. Gosso. This return pass didn't work. So we look to break quickly. Mayuka. Twist away from Colo Toure, who stayed on his feet and watched the ball. Yeah, he had support as well, and I think Mayuka knew that. Toure had support arriving, so read it really well. Lungu. to his right and there was no support outside him so he thought well, I'm gonna to have to play it in chance up over the top real chance oh Mayuka had his finger on the trigger well, the only saving grace really for the Ivory Coast is that he was pressured. It was difficult for him to get the ball in the control. And in fact, was it cleared by Colo Toure in the end? You know, there it is. It just bounced up high. It was brilliant defending. But because it just came up and he couldn't get it under control as quickly as he would have liked Mayuka, it enabled Colo Toure to get back. What a touch that was. In by Kalaba. Peter Carberry has it. Oh, how grateful must he have been for the intervention of Colo Toure? Yeah, if the earlier touch is just slightly better from Ayuka, he keeps it lower, and I don't think Toure would have had his chance. Clever little ball from Chance, though, wasn't oh, it? Was it was a lovely little ball, the way he dinked it, and, you know, it didn't get away from Mayuka. Still going to full back. Sends her across the meeting. They play the handball, corner's almost as good. Need to remain relaxed on the Zambia bench. Not a time to lose it. 45 seconds on the watch. In by Gradle. Brave from the goalkeeper. Snuffed out the danger. And it's in hurry to get going again. Yeah, well, Jovino's come off worst here, but the goalkeeper went in really committed. There was no way he wasn't going to get his whole body behind that. Brave, but he wasn't bothered if he got hurt, he just knew he had to get down and he'd get a block on that and we in. Did it very well. So that's the end of stoppage time to uh, Jovino. It's really so he wants just a short break. He's going to get that in a moment anyway. Really, Jim, there's no indication as to what we should expect, assuming we are going into extra time now. Peter, it can go either way. I mean, I honestly haven't got a clue which way it's going to go now. Um, I honestly thought by now we would have seen the Ivory Coast gain an element of control in the game. It's, it's not been the case. And Zambia are, are right in it. They've, they've matched them all the way and arguably have had the better chances throughout. Borrowed time at the end of stoppage time now. And there'll have to be more time. Still, we wait to find out who will be crowned Champions of Africa 2012. Nought, nought after 90 minutes. 
back to uh, the final of the Africa Cup of Nations in Libreville, Gabon, which is still undecided after 90 minutes of heat and sweat and at times driving rain. 90 minutes, which has included a penalty from Didier Drogba, which sailed a foot or two over the bar. 90 minutes during which the majority of the very best chances, that aside, have fallen away of the underdogs Zambia. Much, much better than to be considered or categorised plucky underdogs. It has not been a case of them hanging on and hoping. They have created, sometimes penetrated, often worried. An ivory coast defence which is still, though, yet to be breached in the entire competition. And uh, if you're looking to us for clues and indicators as to who might win over the course of the next 30 minutes, then Jim, I guess we'll have to look elsewhere because yeah. there just aren't any other. Yeah, I've already expressed that opinion. It is difficult to uh, Samuel Eto. He's um, at the game. Nice to see him there. But um, yeah, it's it's difficult to see any indicators as to like which way it might swing now. Um, Max Gradle certainly made a difference when he came on for Ivory Coast. Gave them a little more width and um, and certainly was prepared to run at the Zambian defence. But um, I think the Zambians have stuck with it. I think the biggest enemy now, obviously, to, to both sides, not just Zambia, is, um, is fatigue. You know, not losing your concentration because once the body gets tired, I always say it, the mind goes with it and people can lapse. So you've really got to try and dig in now and keep your focus. Um, and that's Wilfred Boney just winning that decision. I think it's going to be interesting now to see what sort of mindset the uh, coaches, Bernard there and uh, Zahui, have instilled in the short period between the end of the 90 minutes and the start of extra time, whether we'll see frightened, conservative football, worried about making what could be the decisive mistake, or whether either side has uh, the courage in itself to try and go out there over the next half hour and proactively attempt to win it. Well, I would hope, Peter, if it is decided in, in extra time and it doesn't go to penalties, then that it's, um, that it's a cracking goal that delivers it and, you know, not a mistake or a, a poor refereeing decision or anything like that. I hope somebody can come up with a worldie if they're going to um, clinch the trophy. Scenes in the respective countries in Abidjan. Ivory Coast in Lusaka, Zambia. Ivory Coast uh, almost twice the size in terms of population. Also Zambia, some 20 plus million compared to Zambia's 13 million. But perhaps the most famous of those 20.6 million Ivorians. Yeah, and the keeper was very smart again here. I mean, the touch just gets away from Didier Drogba. Sun Tzu making it difficult for him as well. Does he get a little touch on it? The centre back he does into his goalkeeper, but um, it's well read. It's Zambia's first of two previous finals went to extra time and indeed to a replay. And Ivory Coast won for the only time the Africa Cup of Nations in 1992. Their final went to what is still the joint longest penalty shootout in the whole history of international football. And they beat Ghana 11-10 in a 24-kick shootout. Chansa. And we want to go before rich potential with a piece of that. Lungu. Everybody was kung fu fighting then. Feet were high. <laughs> there you go. Hi, yeah. Skipped away from the uh, tackle of Lungu. Screwed up in the air. Mawini has come and played well. Put a foot or a hand wrong in that regard in this game. As you were saying, Jim, a sometimes uncertain semi final. 
Yeah, and it's 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 nice to see he's got some courage because you know when you make a couple of mistakes and you misjudge a couple of flighted balls in um, in a big game, you know you can be a bit tentative. But he's been quite brave about it in Wiener. Felix Patongo, this is a brave run and a good ball in, and they've hit the post. How many more times Katongo against the foot of the post? Don't know if the keeper got a touch as well. Evidently he did, it's a corner. Yeah, I think judging by that, I think the left foot of Bubakar Bari, I mean, it's a brilliant run, isn't it? Really, through the legs, and he does, it's headed into the net. The keeper gets a really important left foot to that. Oh, vital. One Katongo to another, and against the goalkeeper's foot and the foot of the post, and Calaba's corner. Well, they continue to carve out good chances. I mean, look, it's the barest touch on the studs, Peter, that takes it onto the uh, onto the post and out for a corner. Could have done no more, Christopher Katongo, could he? And what a fabulous run from Felix Katongo. He was, it was a great surge, great burst, you know, and a lovely little nutmegs there. And the ball across again goes through Bamba's legs, but Bubakar Barry got the most important touch in all of that. Still... Nobody can beat him. Now past nine hours of tournament football here. Carl Barry still living a slightly charmed life now. And I, I know Drogba would be kicking himself, Peter, for missing the penalty, you know, and it, it probably should be over. But um, they continue to carve out really good chances, Zambia. And, and I think they've done really well in this competition because there's a natural instinct to attack, but I think they've got the balance right with some really sound defence too. Almost in again. Katonga, Chris Katonga. <laughs> Reach the stage now where already one feels great pity for whichever of these sides has to lose. And there will have to be a loser. Bamba. Radel. Injected some vim and vigour into the Ivory Coast. Get a second bite at this. I think uh, well read again from Sun Tzu. I think he's been terrific. Tiene. Javinho, Boni, Drogba. It's a round. Too much help, certainly not enough help to uh, worry the Senegalese official. Grosso. Kept it nicely. This is better from the Ivory Coast. The string a few passes together. It's more constructive. Would jinx it. Katongo has done similar work for uh, Zambia. Has, uh, that done for the Ivory Coast by Gradle. Here's Lungu. He's real freshness. Body and thought by TNA, Not by Jovino. TNA has kept pumping forward. The first man. We've seen that before, haven't we? Tonight, TNA trying to swing one in, and Kosu getting the block on it. And was it a free kick or a penalty? I think he's gone down very easily. Didier Drogba, I think he's looking for it. Maybe with the latest shot. Scooped up comfortably by Mawine. Yeah, Sunzu's just tracked the run and just stayed with him, but he's gone down softly. Peter did about Ivory Coast conceding no goals in the competition. And, uh, they haven't conceded in their last three games. Tongo, so with too much pace. And one against Senegal in the uh, opening match of their campaign. And then, oddly, 
The only team to score twice against them was Libya. So 1 0 against Equatorial Guinea, 3 0 against Sudan, and then 1 uh, 0 famously against Ghana. Without conceding. He's scared there, isn't he? He's scared of it. It's good to see a coach putting a, a team of underdogs to play with courage, and they certainly have done that throughout the competition, Zambia, and certainly throughout this evening. First period of extra time, and indignity that perhaps deep down Zahui didn't expect this Ivory Coast team to have to go through. Through some pain. Probably no one feeling pain more acutely though than Didier Drogba. Well, it kind of begs the question as well as he continues. Have a moment. Begs the question as to you know. I know he's Didier and he's top man in this country, and I suppose maybe nobody was ever going to take the penalty taking responsibilities away from him after he missed the first one and against Equatorial Pretense of coolness does uh, Renard, perhaps it's genuine coolness. I doubt it in these temperatures and now with these uh, heightened stakes. It's the fullback and Kalsu with the throw. Yuka, Drogba, and uh, fired back in with uh, ambition but without much likelihood of success. Yeah, Sinkal has just kind of cut across that one. I think he's had a good game too. He's been in the thick of it throughout. That's kind of a tired effort, that. But they've been driven. I mean, he, you're saying he's looking cool, Hervé Reynard side, but, you know, he's a, he's a fierce competitor, isn't he? I mean, he really does kind of demand everything from his players. And, um, and they've, they've given it to him. They're still giving it to him. Past the 100 minute mark now in the final. Gradle. The winnie. He's got a long way to get back now. For him. Just brought back tumbling. Brought a few memories back for me of an old teammate of mine called Bruce Grobola. <laughs> he liked to have a little roam outside his box occasionally. <laughs> well, very cool, the first one. <laughs> and then he thinks, oh, hang on a minute. What about the return pass? Yeah. Well, he couldn't pick it up, obviously, in case it was interpreted as a pass back, but did the right thing and launched it. A long, long night in Libreville. It's a venue which will hold great memories after this tournament has finished. Great Gabonese memories in particular. The goals of Obama Yang on this round, the 3-2 three, three, win for Gabon against Morocco. Zita's last gasp winner. For a late winner here, perhaps. Zita's in the way. So on this round, great Malian celebrations when they went through. Gabon Mali penalty shootout, Obama Yang's traumatic miss as recently Jovino's run from halfway in the semi-final for the Ivory Coast yeah and this is probably the one mistake Sun Tzu has made tonight not the greatest decision to head it to his right but he made up for it by getting the block on Jovino's attempt it's 
by Chiote. We pick Zambia. Last offensive opportunity, presumably before half time and extra time. I was just thinking there, I wonder whether Chris, Chris Katonga was playing on that more. Peter realizing that Teote is already on a yellow card, and that could have um, seen a second one issued. And this is the cut inside again from Jovino. He scuffed it a bit, didn't he? And Sunzu was there. intending to take these left-footed for uh, Zambia. Also behind the ball there, Humunde. Chansa. He has set uh, a wall of four come five. And this will probably be the last meaningful kick of this period. into the wall. Ayuka. Right by Sinkala. And, uh, a push at the back of TNA. Yeah, and that was the, the chance of free kick. Conan on the end of the wall, just got his head to it. Or oh, was it his shoulder? It's his shoulder in the end. Still uh, ailing. Bernard still offering instruction as uh, I think the half time whistle goes. Midway through extra time, we're still no clearer knowing the post has had a stay, but it remains at Zambia nil, the Ivory Coast nil. Thank you for the moment, Peter and Jim. Chance to get a quick word with the boys in the studio. This is uh, tight and tense, Stefan, and getting tighter and tenser, particularly for the Ivory Coast, I would imagine. Extremely. Um, afraid to win. You know, they're afraid to release the shackles, and players have to win these tournaments. You know, they won't be given to you. Zambia are not going to give any gifts to Ivory Coast. And, uh, you know, they've nearly snatched it with a fantastic piece of skill from Felix Katongo, and Christopher Katongo hits the post there, but um, off the studs, not even the boot, off the studs of Bubakar Barry, and that's kept Ivory Coast in the game. Um, it looks like penalties, which I never thought we'd see. But, but yeah. Lauren called it before. But he, but he was afraid to say. I never you know, thought we'd probably get pens. I never thought we'd see him miss by that much drug, but Lauren. Huge. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of pressure in that in that kind of particular situation, and then uh, he couldn't cope with it. But he wasn't keen on the pitch. Not sure. He had much to do with the pitch, did it? No, the pitch is fine. I think <laughs> that's normally. I think any player will probably do that. But you would expect Didier Dropper to, to put that away and be disappointed. But so far, I would have to say Zambia is a better team. Well, indeed. However, it remains goalless. 15 minutes to penalties as we rejoin Jim and Peter. Thanks, Matt. No longer do we have favourites and underdogs. It's, uh, Zambia and the Ivory Coast. 15 minutes football. And either is entitled to put their hand up and claim it. Both entitled to claim that they have had their moment when it might have gone their way is Gosso. He's as good a crack goalward as uh, they've had for quite a while, did he, at Yeah, that, that's a very good attempt. And we it. I mean, to be honest, he was rooted. He didn't know where it was going. And just unfortunate for Conan Yeah, he just gets a little too much elevation on it. Very good try, wonderful whip and bend. And he wanted to close down. Do you think during the course of the game, Jim, particularly this stage of the game, the players have any consciousness of the of the wider picture? Are they just thinking football, or are they thinking, my goodness me, this matters to so many people, there are... You can't afford to think like that. I know, I know where you're coming from, but you can't. I mean, you know, any, any time I had a, you know, an extra time in a, 
I, I had a, a couple of semi-finals extra time then then um you know you can't your, your mind is just on doing your job you're focusing on what's in front of you in by Gradle scooped away from uh, in front of drug but by the still excellent Stofira Sunzu again you know I think he's been brilliant he's been in the way of most things but again Gradle is the one providing a service providing some sort of threat Requesting a lift from my Ivorian supporters. Gradle's corner. He lost it momentarily. And then uh, demonstrates irritation that he was prevented from clearing it hurriedly. That's oh, a really gorgeous take. And a penetrative run. He could be in here. Oh! It's a fabulous tackle to deny Kalaba. It was a fabulous piece of control and a really brave run. That was a beautiful take and, and really committed as well. But Bamba does superbly well. I don't think he's going for goal in the end, Peter, which I think helps Bamba's cause. I think Kalaba's just trying to pull it across the six yard box and that enabled Bamba to get something on it. Kalaba won the corner, Kalaba will take the corner. Drifted into the near post. Winked away by Drogba. Challenge on the gradle by Felix Katonga. Yeah, that was a foul. Gradle's just had a little tug with his left arm on Felix Katonga's shoulder. They still haven't scored a goal in the final. One on penalties. Also Zambia's third final, and they've never won it. Like the Ivory Coast, they have had a lead, contradictorily. Gradle. And again, getting round the back, Gradle's delivery, no one there to meet it. Has come out to Gosso. Yeah, I know it's always easier from up here, but then Gradle probably just needed to just pull it back a little bit. And here he is again. Gradle, a potential match changer. Tiote. Deflected for Jovino, good stop. I think the flag's up. I think he's flagged offside. I don't think he would have counted anyway. But he really got hold of it, Tiote, didn't he? He absolutely smacked that one and you know, just kind of ricocheted right into Jovino's path. It's there, it's the touch from there that actually gets him into an offside position. I think it hit Wilfred Boney. But um, I'll tell you what, if the assistant's called that, he's picked it up well. You know, and it's it's a nice attempt to, to swing it far post, found its way to Gossip from Gradle, but just a little drag back then, and he may have found an orange shirt. Incredible tension now. This does mean so much to so many people. It's almost obligatory for the Ivory Coast. It's a fantasy close to realisation for Zambia. It's almost becoming the Max Gradle show now. I mean, he's the root. Everything has been played to him because he's so effective. That time Sincala again coming out from central midfield. Good stop. Dropper may have to take another penalty. Sean at the World Cup, missing that big one against Uruguay and then stepping up in the shootout. So courageously, he's been through the horrors again in this competition. In once more by Gradle. He's come off uh, Chancer and behind. 
I was there that night at Soccer City, Peter, but there's still a bit of life in this extra time, you know. And, and it's the Ivory Coast now who kind of finally picked it up and, and look for the first time in the match, look as if they have a control on things. To his side netting from Julian Cordignard's corner. Really, who was uh, panicking a little for a while there. Lungu was pretty convinced it was actually going wide, wasn't he? Because he gave up on it near post, just kind of ducked his head down. Well, from beginning to end, this has been an absorbing competition, a competition that began without Algeria, without the four times champions Cameroon, without the two times champions Nigeria, without the seven times champions Egypt, without South Africa. It looked to be opening up for Ghana, who've gone, or Ivory Coast, who are still alive. Zambia have come up on the rail. But, uh, in the absence of any of the established strong nations, it remains up for grabs right to the last. Zambia's greatest chance. Well, what to think next? All right. Yeah, really good flick on as well, wasn't it, from Didier Drogba? But um, just out of Wilfred Boney's reach, people was always favourite. Help us down here, but they're not stopping to treat him. Lungu. Tongo. The throw. Nervy away by Colo Toure. These are nervy moments. Strong drive. That's not so very far off target. How well hit was that? I mean, I'm just looking at the goalkeeper scrambling. You know, Brilliantly hit again, wasn't it, by Calaba? But I think the keeper was, uh, from, from where we're watching anyway, Peter, I think the keeper was always more in control because he had a, a better sight of where it was going than, than we did. Do you know, it's going to be interesting, Jim, to see whether the worldwide scouting network takes an interest in any of these Zambian players because, as we've repeatedly mentioned over the course of the weeks and certainly the evening, they came into this without reputations, most of them playing a domestic football, showing up really well against major reputations. Yeah, it comes together. and it's not just all about the attacking talent, you know, the likes of Kalaba, Mayuka. You like um, Sunzu, don't you? I love Sunzu at the back, I think he's done well, I think Himunde beside him has been pretty strong as well, I think those two as a pair look not bad. But you never know, Peter, do you? I mean, how many managers have we seen that have taken a chance on three weeks' work and then they don't quite get what they were hoping for, so... I think maybe following up and watching them for their clubs, their respective clubs, is probably uh, required. Certainly, for, from what I've seen, Mayuk and Kalaba, definitely Sunzu. I think they're they're worth a shot. scores in the next four minutes he will be one of seven players to uh, share the honor of being top scorer in this year's competition together with Trogba, Tongo, Manisho of uh, Angola, Obamiang of Gabon, Kaja of Morocco 
and uh, Diabate, who scored twice for Mali in the third place playoff last night. Here comes Mawine, he's got to get back, he's in trouble here. It didn't fall kindly, it still might. And uh, Zambia got bodies around it and got off the hook, but only for now. Three minutes to play. Yeah, he's hurt now, the goalkeeper. But, you know, after he, he had to come for this, and, you know, he did really well to get something on it. And Wiener, that's very brave, you know, right right out at, at Jovino. And I think maybe Gradle could have been a little braver on the follow-up. But this is um, this is courageous. I mean, Jovino took one as well. But the keeper had to get there and get something on that, and he did. Because if he misses it, he could have been given a penalty away. And I think Gradle didn't really, when he saw Himunde coming at him, he kind of half pulled out of it. And Amunde is able to get away with it with the bicycle kick. Well, now this goalkeeper has saved a penalty in the semi final. He has a reputation as a penalty saver. He's two and a half minutes away from facing five of them. What Zambia least want is for him to be badly hurt. I think he's going to be okay. But there would be a, a sort of traumatic irony if he were to be required to leave the field this close to a shootout. Because that is his speciality. I think it'll take a lot easier to stop him carrying on now. You know, it was the drug the flick on that caused all the uncertainty. The keeper did very well. And, um, and there was enough bodies back for Zambia to make sure it wasn't followed up by Ivory Coast. Coast are just trying to kind of rally the supporters, get him to get behind the team even more to see them through this. Referees additions. Numbers up. Ahead of Lungu. Uh, He's not right still, is he? Really? There appears to have developed some sort of truce here. <laughs> a hurry on either side but there remains just enough time for someone anyone well, there wasn't too much wrong with him kicking that so that that all goes well and Mayuk is getting it again from the sidelines there you go, he's not he's not working hard enough to get back on side. After two hours football in 27 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. Well he's that kind of coach though, isn't he? We were just talking about how demanding he was. There is an intensity about him. Last two minutes, horrible header from Chancer. Fine catch for Arena. as though it's going to penalties again. It does appear to be a bit of an African habit. Exciting one. Does Drogba take one now, Peter? You've got to want to, surely. You've got to want to try and put it right. Should it get there? Lungu, perhaps it won't get there. Throw. It's gone the other way. And again by Sunzu. One last chance for Zambia. Chance that 
anticipates. Yeah, didn't need to go high, did he? Didn't need to loft it. It could have just gone to feet. It's a lovely little flick as well, a chance that Calaba just should have played it along the deck. That's a good dash, this. And it could still break. Sunzu away. Not for the first time, but certainly for the last, because this is going to the Gabonese wire. Zambia have fought like tigers, but the Ivory Coast's elephantine skin is unpenetrated too, and so we require penalties. Nil-nil after two hours of the final, and the shootout comes very soon. Penalties, it will have to be. Group huddles all round in Libreville. Quinton Fortune, does Didier Drogba definitely take a penalty here? Um, I, I wouldn't, if I was a manager, I wouldn't let him take another penalty. Wouldn't but, you? Um, if, he, if, I, if he comes, if he steps up, uh, you know, Tell me he wants to take it, I'll let him take it. But it's just it's about the feeling now and how confident he is and how, you know, how his mindset is. Oh. He'd probably want to be at the other end because he's not keen on the pitch down this end, but he has to blank that out of his mind, Lauren. He has to forget that, I guess. Yeah, as uh, as Quentin said uh, already, you know, um, um, you've got the pressure there, but I think he will step up and. Uh, it will, it will, it will be one of the one of, one one of the takers. Yeah. I guess the pressure's still on Ivory Coast, though. Zambia, in a way, I wouldn't say they have nothing to lose, Evan, but but less to lose. Is that? Can um, you see that or not? There's less pressure on them. Yeah. Uh, they will see there's some sort of triumph already that they've reached the final, beaten two heavyweights along the way, Senegal and Ghana, in uh, in a tenth semi-final. Um, so lots of pride that they will take back to Lusaka, irrespective of what happens now yeah. in, in the next few minutes. Um, and huge pressure on Ivory Coast, of course, yeah. and Drogba should take one. In, in this instance, the coach really shouldn't be picking players. Five players have to put their hands up and say, I'll take one. And as captain, leader of the team, the national team, Drogba should be first to put his hand up. If he misses, he misses. Nobody then can accuse him of shying away and being cowardly. Um, Moene, we know, is a good penalty. Yeah, uh, we don't stopper. know quite how fit he is. He was wincing slightly, wasn't he? I hope he's OK. Of... Yeah, I certainly hope he's OK. And Extra because time. both their goalkeepers deserve the opportunity uh, to try and um, lift the trophy for yeah. their team. There's the last-minute instructions for, uh, for Bubakar Bari. He took one, of course, in 2002, Lauren, when Cameroon won. So you've been in this position. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation, you know. Yeah, you have to be very concentrated and... Uh, and forget about everything around you and, and be focused on, on that penalty, you know? Easier said this than done. This keeper looks good. Yeah. I think he's, he will be <laughs> major part of He looks very, very confident. So. The goalkeepers can't lose. Yeah. You know, there's no pressure on them at all. You dive one way, it goes the other. Nobody will really blame you. Um, no? Luck. They're singing again, the Zambians. It's normally a good sign. We are, I think, about to find out who wins this Africa Cup of Nations. More tension, I would suggest, in those ranks. Perhaps that's not surprising. Let's rejoin Peter Drury. We are about to find out, Matt, just how soon remains to be seen because uh, we have a couple of goalkeepers here who take some beating. We have one in particular here who is a specialist in dealing with penalties. And it would appear that the Ivory Coast are going to take theirs first in the person of Czech Tiote. We were able to uh, hear on the effect microphone from the Zambian coach during the interval before penalties, and his repeated motto was this, this is our time. He believes that this is Zambia's time. He wants his players to remember that. That it is the privilege or pressure. Check Tiote to take the first kick, and he scores it. I did, he did exactly what you should do, Peter. You make your mind up which side you're going to go for and completely commit to it. No doubts, no changing. And he sent Mwene the wrong way. Very good start. Yeah. 
Pinkar Barry, the uh, Liborian goalkeeper, you hardly need reminding, has not been beaten in this competition yet. Surely at some point in the forthcoming shootout. Captain goes first, it's Christopher Katongo. How canny was that? Given what's riding on it. Oh, there's a man in control. You know, he's just had the little pause as he stepped up to it and waited, and the goalkeeper was undecided where to go, got rooted to the spot as he hunched Barry and stuck away very nicely. Continued togetherness, continued song, not a little prayer. Wilfred Bonnie. Just ensuring that spot is up to scratch. One each taken, one each scored. And for Côte d'Ivoire, also scores. Very good one. Yeah, well, that was pretty emphatic, wasn't it? I mean, high and wide, I think, even if the goalkeeper had guessed right that time, he wasn't getting there. Excellent spot kick from Wilfred Boney. Just a reminder that uh, Ivory Coast 1992 shoots out, they won 11 10. Emmanuel Mayuka, the star of the Zambian show for the last three weeks. Mayuka with another splendid penalty. And the relief that follows it. Well, just look at Barry's reaction. I mean, he guessed right this time, the goalkeeper, and he thought he might just get something on it. But it's high enough, isn't it, from Mayuka? And again, it's a, a very well-delivered penalty. Still no sign of Drogba. of Leicester City. Big centre half, strong in the air. Needs to be strong of mind now. What a test of temperament and of person and of technique. And it's saved! Well, is, is he, is he going to make him retake it because the goalkeeper move off his line? He may get a second go. He may get a second go. off his line mind I've seen worse look it's the assistant whose flag goes straight up I'll tell you what that's harsh Bamba again and this time he hits the roof of the net well I mean, he's taken a big gouge as well out of where the, the penalty spot was <laughs> there seems to be a divot almost now look at that it really did cut up so the next person taking one he got away with it, Bam, because the first one wasn't great. And I think it's very harsh on the goalkeeper, but the second one was um, was very strong. Uh, technically speaking, it was right, Jim, wasn't it? He had come off his line, but my goodness me, plenty of others have. It's chance now for Zambia, who glimpsed their chance then and had it snatched away, strictly speaking, correctly by officialdom. Chance to keep the Zambians level. Some have ceased to watch. He's saying a prayer. It's answered. Very, very composed from Chancer. Again, picked the spot and placed it exactly where he wanted. And no problems with the penalty spot, thankfully. Three each. And you're right, Peter, after Bamba's penalty, you just wonder where the goalkeepers were when the others were dispatched. You know, it'll be interesting to actually look back on them and, and see where their position was. Now, Max Bradel had a really good impact on the game when he came on as a substitute. And it is he who goes eyeball to eyeball with Mawine now. And he scores two. 
margin for Zambian error is now pretty well nothing. Superb. Well done, Max Gradle. Superb. He's had a great influence on things. If this next Zambian penalty were to be missed, we would have match point Ivory Coast. Now powerless, the coach. Believing as a body of men, Felix Kotongo. Even though those who have paid to watch can no longer watch. A glance heavenward. A check of this damaged spot. Between the ears. Concentration, desperation, and a fine execution. It is 4-4. In effect, it is now sudden death. Well, I'm just saying, Peter, look at Barry's position, because he comes out off his line. Now, if he'd got a hand to that, it's not going to be disallowed as well. But um, well done again, Felix Katonga. Frustration for Barry. means now that no one really can afford to miss. We have still not seen Didier Drogba, we now see Didier Drogba. The captain, the talisman, the icon, the scorer of three goals in this competition, the misser of two penalties. This the fifth and possibly pivotal penalty. My goodness me, this takes fibre. How strong is he? Big man, big man, courage. Big relief too, because I'm telling you, Peter, no matter how big a character is, he would have been feeling that. And this time he gets it right. And there is a bit of give, isn't there, as he hits it? There's a little bit of a minor slip, but um, well dispatched, really well dispatched. And that's very impressive from Didier Drogba. And now the Zambian nation holds its collective breath. The goalkeeper is going to take Mawine, who saved critically in the semi-final, is obliged to score in the final or they lose. These fabulous underdogs from Zambia leaning on their keeper now, Mawine. Calm as you like. Five each. Dear, oh dear. That's lovely to see as well, isn't it? The handshake between the two goalkeepers. Barry, no hard feelings. You've done me. I mean, it wasn't quite in the corner, but sent the keeper the wrong way, or the other keeper the wrong way, and again, very nicely done. It was a nice handshake. You know, Barry could hardly look him in the eye, perhaps knowing that positions could very soon be reversed. 90 minutes couldn't separate them, extra time couldn't separate them, five penalties each could not separate them, and it is now officially sudden death. The sixth taker for the Ivory Coast, Siaka Tiene, the left fullback. It's another beauty. My goodness me, there are some good penalties being hit here. Well, it really is. I mean, lovely loft on it, out of the goalkeeper's reach. And uh, no surprise to see that reaction from his bench. Who next for Renard? All but expressionless. Evening soaked in tension. Nathan Sinkala, who worked himself to the bone in the Zambian midfield, doesn't deserve to be a loser. His nation's fortunes hang on his strike of the ball. Sinkala, 
has hit the roof as well with an impeccable take. That's probably the best of the lot. That, with the pressure on, that was absolutely fantastic. A little kiss on the football, and you know, Peter, for a moment I thought that had sailed over. And then it just kind of made the net move and... Oh, perfect, absolutely perfect. Every coast have what you might perceive to be the preferable position of striking first, but on each of their players there is an obligation. Didier Cournagnac. Thumps the back of the net. Another emphatic strike. 13 penalties taken, 13 scored. Well, I mean, Amwini, you know, has gone gone low again, another one has gone high and, and very well executed once more. You just wonder whether, you know, Barry's to face one next, whether he can um, can stand up, stay a little high. They all seem to be going going upwards. Lungu to go next. And every Zambian who steps forward knows that to miss is to lose. Never before, champions of Africa. Never faced with a better opportunity. Never encumbered with so much pressure. Shisamba Lungu. Well done, sir. Well done. Well, I'm not sure whether he's just trying to wind Barry up. Um, after putting it away, but again, it was really cool. It was very composed, kept his head. But if it is a wind-up, no need. And the human pain you feel in advance is for the poor individual who misses. Somebody has to miss. That is the agony of a shootout, whatever its circumstance. Circumstance here is one of such great pressure and expectation, such great national desire on both parts. Nayo Toure is off the field, Kolo Toure represents the family. He's been through the mill in recent months. Carlo Torre now he prepares for perhaps the most important strike of a football of his often distinguished career. It's a bit of a run up. Saved by Mouini, and this time the flag stays down. And Zambia have match point. Well, you're right, the flag has to stay, stay down, but you just wonder, was he off his line when he got the touch on it, and Mouina? I don't think it was quite in the corner. It was a long run-up from Colo Toure. It's not nowhere near the corner. And to be fair, you know, he's moved slightly off, but... You know, what's different about that, Peter, to what we saw before? That's what I mean. Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. But it's not done yet. 15 penalties taken, now one missed. The 16th of the contest is the one. The one. Rainford Kalaba. To Zambian song, Zambian prayer, Zambian hope. To inspire Zambian joy for the underdogs. It couldn't be Zambia this year, could it? Kalaba. He has lifted it over the crossbar. And the agony goes on. Poor fella. Poor, poor chap. His moment has got away from him. Yeah, and in the same now, Didier Drogba's skipper has got to have a word with Jovino. Presuming he's let... I mean, it was similar, wasn't it, to Drogba's? He's lent back. Maybe there's a little bit of give along the way, but, you know, the singing has stopped. 
that close to it. And so the pain goes on, and they were up, ready to party, and the party was postponed, and Jovino wanders forward. Colo Torre is off the hook. There will be a different victim. The eighth Ivorian taker, Colo Torre can breathe again. Jovino of Arsenal. Still conjecture around the spot itself. They couldn't find it. It was about a yard in front. Horribly damaged turf. Some damaged nerves here too. Jovino has lifted his over. Three misses in a row. And again, Zambia are on the cusp of continental glory. That's incredible, isn't it? We wait. 14 penalties, one is missed, followed by another two. And now they have another chance. Trevino, oh, he's devastated. I mean, that is really wayward, it's not even close, is it? Who next? Who dares go next? Pain for Jovino, ongoing pain for the Ivory Coast, who had to win it this year. Opportunity knocks once more for Zambia. Sunzo! Champions against all odds! And amid what scenes of elation! on day one, still so rank outsiders on the day of the final, but somehow Zambia and their smart Svelte coach have climbed every successive hurdle. Tonight they climbed the highest of them all, and for the first time they are kings of all Africa. Emotional, poignant of course, that it should occur in the very city where 30 Zambians lost their lives two decades ago. For the team of 93, for all Zambia, for every party goer in Lusaka, for the Copper Bullets, the gold medal, for the Ivorians' pain, the 14 different champions of Africa are Zambia. As heartbreaking as it clearly is for Ivory Coast, the pictures tell a story. The injured Musonda carried on to the pitch by his coach to sing with his teammates. Destiny and fate clearly were in Zambia's dugout tonight. How about that for a happy ending? For Zambia. Delighted coach. <laughs> they might need a new shirt, and of course, it's all in memory of those that were lost back in 1993. And there's one of the few that didn't perish, Kalusha Walia, now president of the Zambian Football Federation, the best player of that team. He and so many others delighted that that trophy will soon be in Zambian hands. Great scenes, great scenes. And of course, for every winner, there is sadly a loser. It's very tough on the Ivory Coast, who've been so often the bridesmaids, the nearly men of the Cup of Nations. And again, for Didier Drogba, who missed a penalty in normal time, but was big enough to go and score one in the shootout. Again, it's a case of going home empty handed. Christopher Katongo, the winning captain, receiving the first of, no doubt, many baubles trophies and I'm sure army promotions man of the competition apparently yeah there we go spin the board around and win another prize that's how it goes when it's going your way <laughs> uh, Lauren you look a little bit worn out by that it's quite a, it's tough to watch it's fantastic you know uh, I, I think a few heart attack in in both countries yeah, yeah. today but overall uh, Zambia deserve it and uh, 
my, my point of view will be the history has given them back what they lost 16 years ago. Yeah, good way of putting it. Nice, nice formal words. And um, it's obviously difficult times for any, any Ivory Coast players got to do the formalities as Gosso has to do there effing but um, yeah as, as Lauren says there's a sense of history being written for the, the righteous I suppose yeah somebody was looking out for them uh, maybe uh, many people were looking out for them mm. and well deserved because they look more likely to score they troubled um, the opposition goalkeeper I'm fitting that uh, Stopia Sunzu who was probably arguably the best centre mm. back of the tournament had a, ma a massive game tonight he steps up with a winning penalty. One or two Ivorian plays, clearly for me, didn't want to take penalties. I don't think Drogba wanted to take a fifth penalty. He had to because everybody scores. Juvenio clearly didn't. His coach was sort of imploring him to take one. And uh, the guys whose nerves have stood up to the test better have come out victorious and well-deserved. You, you know, this has not been a fluky win. You know, they've beaten three of the best sides on the continent. Yeah. And they are worthy champions. Yeah, that's a good point. Beat Senegal, beat Ghana, and, and have, I think, deservedly got the best of Ivory Coast. But... No, definitely. I mean, you look through the whole game. Um, you know, Ivory Coast had the chances. They didn't take it. Um, but overall, I would say uh, Zambia were the better team. They tr played a better football. They were trying to win the game. And then when it came to the penalties, I mean, they were confident, the keeper especially, um, won in the game, um, brilliant. And it's like, like Lauren mentioned, it's almost like, they were, I suppose, angels were them yeah. on, the, on the pitch of them, you know, the players lost their life and uh, yeah. a special, special moment for them. And, uh, Absolutely. Great moments there. Goalkeeper didn't half play his part. The trophy is on its way and in just a couple of moments...